his brothers tried, tried the hardest they could to stop God's blessing. Circumstances tried to stop God's blessing. People tried to stop God's blessing. But I know that somewhere in the pit, somewhere in the dungeon, somewhere in that dark place where it looked like he was forsaken, where it looked like God's plan wasn't going to happen, where it looked like the word of the Lord wasn't true, in that dark place, somewhere in the midst of that journey, Joseph had a divine perspective change. That brought a supernatural shift in his life. And I want you to see this in Psalm 105. Psalm 105 verse 17. I love this scripture. It paints such an amazing statement about Joseph. He sent, he meaning God. He sent a man before them. Even Joseph who was sold as a servant. His feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in chains of iron and his soul entered into the iron. Have you ever felt so bound that it's not even just external circumstances, but it's like your soul enters into that thing. It's so painful. It's so deep in how it affects you. Until his word to his cruel brothers came true, until the word of the Lord tried and tested him. The king sent and loosed him. Even the ruler of the peoples and let him go free. He made Joseph lord of his house and ruler of all of his substance. To bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his elders wisdom. The statement I want to focus in on right now. He sent a man before them who was sold as a slave. He sent a man who was sold as a slave. Well, that's two very different things in one sentence. He sent a man who was sold as a slave. Well, which is it? Was he sent or was he sold? Because they're two very different things. But the reality is both are true. One is heaven's perspective. The other is an earthly perspective. The earthly perspective, Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. Joseph was hurt and wounded by those closest to him. Joseph was thrown into a pit. Joseph was sold as a slave. Joseph was put in a dungeon. Earthly perspective. Heaven's perspective. Joseph was a man sent by God. Joseph was a man sent by God. Heaven's perspective. And when you begin to have heaven's perspective, you get a revelation on something. That every single thing the enemy does to defeat you, God is always steps ahead to position you for the promotion that God has for you. God is so big that everything the enemy orchestrates and designs for your defeat, every assignment sent against you, To destroy your life. Everything sent against you from the hand of the enemy to hinder and stop God's blessing and plan for you. God is so big that he's always steps ahead of it. That he is able to anoint that thing to position you in the right place at the right time for God's plan to happen in your life. It's a divine perspective change. Heaven's perspective or earth's perspective. And somewhere in the pit or in the dungeon, as Joseph saw all the walls. Now, we've talked about walls this week. He saw all the walls around him. He saw those walls. And those walls looked like they were stopping God's plan. Anyone have ever have someone do something to you, speak to you, or, or, or treat you in such a way that you thought... That that person's behavior was somehow hindering your life. Or bringing something negative into your life. Or bringing stress into your life. Come on, anyone here ever have someone else treat you in such a way or behave in such a way that their behavior was now affecting you in a negative way? Well, this is exactly what was happening to Joseph. Someone else's negative behavior was now affecting him in a negative way. Their jealousy was now affecting him. Their anger was now affecting him. Their actions were now affecting him. And it looked like 
they were stopping the word of the Lord. It looked like they were stopping God's plan and purpose for Joseph. But somewhere, somewhere in the pit, somewhere in the dungeon, Joseph got a perspective change. And I know he did. And I'm going to show you how I know he got a perspective change. But it's so important that we get a perspective change. You know, perspective is a very powerful thing. Perspective is a very powerful thing. Before you ever get a breakthrough on the outside, God will give you a breakthrough on the inside. Joseph was in the, in the dungeon, but can I tell you, on the inside, he was a free man. Before he got a breakthrough on the outside, he already had a breakthrough on the inside. You see, perspective is powerful. The lower you go, the higher the wall seems. The lower you go, look, you can have a molehill, but the lower you go, it becomes a mountain. The higher you go, that mountain becomes a molehill. And God wants to so elevate you with divine perspective that every mountain in your life becomes a molehill. Where everything that you think would stop you, would hinder you, and hinder God's blessing in your life, all the mountains that are in front of you, God wants to turn the mountains into molehills. And you know what a molehill is? A molehill is a speed bump. And speed bumps don't stop you. You don't go up to a speed bump and press on the brake and stop there while everyone else is stopping behind you. When you come up to a speed bump, you slightly press on the brake to slightly slow down, but you keep on going. You go over speed bumps. You don't stop at them. And some of us have seen mountains in front of us and we've stopped in front of those mountains because we've been stuck in a low level perspective. And it seems so high and so insurmountable and so impossible. And God is saying, come up higher, come up higher. I want you to see what I see. I want you to see this thing from my perspective. Because the higher you go, the lower the mountain becomes until it becomes a speed bump in your life. And you don't stop. You just slightly, slightly tap on the brake, but you go right over that speed bump and you keep on going. Come on now, you are about to go over your mountain today. That mountain is not going to hold you back. You're going to go up and over that mountain. Divine perspective. And I know we had a perspective change because when you go fast forward to the end of Joseph's story, it's an amazing, it's an amazing moment. Because here now Joseph, Joseph was in Pharaoh's house. Think about that. Sold as a slave, betrayed by his brothers, years behind walls. And now he's in Pharaoh's house. He's in Pharaoh's house. And his brothers, the land is in famine. And his brothers come to Pharaoh's house for help. Can I tell you something today? God is so good at anointing you to help the very ones who try to stop God's plan in your life. And God is so just and God is so good that he is able to even bring the ones who spoke against you all the way back around that mountain to being in a place of needing you. And they came back to Pharaoh's court and Joseph sees his brothers. And he starts weeping. He starts crying. And all of Pharaoh's house hears about Joseph is weeping. They hear it throughout the house. And he's not weeping because of self-pity. He's not weeping because of unhealed wounds. He's weeping for a very, very different reason. He's weeping out of love. And he sees his brothers... And he says, brothers, it's me, Joseph. Come here, brothers. And I know he got a perspective change somewhere in this process, somewhere in this journey. Because when he sees his brothers, he makes this statement. His brothers were so afraid. I mean, they were like, oh, no, it's Joseph. 
How'd he get here? Last time we saw him, we sold him off. How'd he get here? How's he in a place of power? We sold him off. How'd he get in this place of power? We're in trouble. He's going to kill us. And they were rightfully trembling at the realization that Joseph was now in power. No matter what they did, they couldn't stop God's plan. I'm telling you today, no matter what people do against you, no matter what the enemy does against you, no matter what life throws at you, it cannot stop the plan of God from your life. It cannot stop the blessing of God from your life. It can't. It can't. And Joseph is weeping. And he says, come near. And they did. And he said, I'm Joseph, your brother. And now he says this, don't be distressed. Don't be disheartened. Don't be vexed or even angry with yourself that you sold me here. Don't even be angry with yourself that you messed up my life. Don't even be upset with yourself that you caused me nights of pain and days of discouragement. Don't be upset at yourself that you stressed me out and hurt me and betrayed me and wounded me and took years of my life from me. Don't be angry with yourself. And then he makes this statement. He says, for God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. For these two years, famine has been in the land. And there's still five more years, by the way. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a posterity and a remnant in the earth to save lives by great escape. So now, it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and a ruler over all the land of Egypt. It was not you who sent me here. You may have thought it was you. You may have thought it was you. But God sent me here. God sent me here. He got a perspective change. A man sold as a slave got a perspective change that he was being sent by God. And he turned to his brothers and he said, you may have sold me, but God sent me. You may have, you may have betrayed me, but God was positioning me. You may have cast me down, but God, but God was busy working, lifting me up. You may have tried to defeat me, but God was giving me victory. And he got a revelation that even the most painful things in his life that looked like they were, they were working in the exact opposite direction of God's word, even the most painful dark moments were not defeating him. They were positioning him to be in the right place at the right time for the fulfillment of God's plan for his life. From the pit to Potiphar's house to the dungeon. And it was in the dungeon that he met the right person. In the dungeon. Sometimes in your darkest place where you think the enemy is winning, God has actually allowed you to get there so that you'll meet the right person, so you'll be in the right place at the right time for that promotion to happen in your life. Joseph had to be in the dungeon to meet Pharaoh. And sometimes the darkest places in our life, while God hasn't, hasn't caused that to happen, the free will behavior of others have caused it to happen. But yet God has allowed it because he's so big, he is maneuvering things ahead of time. To make sure, okay, this thing's not going to destroy you. This thing's not going to get you down. This thing is not going to stop my plan. I'm going to use this thing to position you in the right place. And the devil's going to regret he ever tried to knock you down. Because the harder he tried to knock you down, the higher up I'm going to lift you. The higher up you're going to go. The further down you go, the higher up you're going to go. 